My name is Blarim. I'm the CPO of Isinga, a open source monitoring software, um, mainly for availability monitoring. And formerly, I've been a systems engineer for many years. Um, and I've used tools like Grafana and other tools before that that um, helped us debugging issues in infrastructures. And there are some common pitfalls that we can avoid when we use data visualization tools like Grafana. And I would like to just show you some of the common pitfalls that are out there that you can take care of. Um, when we use data visualization, there are, um, if we have wrong graphs or wrong panels, wrong data visualization, that leads us to misinterpretation. It makes us hunt ghosts, basically, when we use, when we think we know something, when we think we, we found something in a graph that looks strange, but actually just the graph was strange, and we hunted ghosts for hours to find the issue in our infrastructure. Um, and when I started to prepare for this talk, I searched the web for the worst graph I could find. Um, and I think I got a pretty good one. If you look at this, it's about a new law that came up in Florida in 2005 about guns. And it makes us think that when the, when the uh, gun law was, was newly um, yeah, in, in Florida, that the rate of murders by guns dropped. But if you look closely, um, you can see on the left side that actually they just flipped the graph. It's technically correct but it um, doesn't follow conventions. And by doing that, it makes us think that, that actually it dropped where it actually increased murder rate by, um, by guns. Um, and following conventions is one important part when visualizing data, especially when using this data to debug any issue in your infrastructure. So let's see an example here. Um, what we can see here is a load graph. It's pretty small, but maybe you can see the, the text on the top. We can see that the load drops and sometimes increases. Um, looks normal at the first glance. What we cannot see here at the first point is that on the left side, the y-axis starts at round about 60. So the load is actually pretty high, but because we didn't set the correct minimum, um, we cannot see it at the first glance. We believe that the graph shows us a pretty normal load on the server, where it actually is pretty, pretty high, depending on, on the hardware, obviously. So it's pretty important to use proper labeling, setting minimum and maximum where it um, is necessary, and setting the correct values, and describing the data that we see. Because if we create a graph and we exactly know what we want to, want to visualize, we also have to take care that our coworkers also are able to understand the graph that they are viewing. So if you're using any special functions or any special, um, special things in your graph, you have to describe it so anyone in your organization can understand them, actually. Um, this brings me to the next point, which is comparability. Um, we saw in the last example that because we didn't set the minimum um, like it should be, uh, we couldn't compare the values to each other. This is an example of uh, the memory usage on, on a server. Um, it's stacked, um, but at the first glance, you are not really able to see what the free RAM actually is. So how much memory is free on that server? Um, that is because the, the stacking, like it is done here, is completely useless. You have to figure out what are the labels on the, on the bottom, what is actually the free memory, is it increasing or is it decreasing? So highlighting the important parts is pretty, yeah, pretty important to, for, for data visualization. This is a better example. I flipped the values on the stack. It's still stacked, but I just flipped the values, and you can see it first glance that the memory is actually increasing. I put the total uh, free memory to the background so you can still see it, but it's not the first thing that comes into your eye. Speaking about labeling, um, this is a pretty nice graph. 
it looks good. We can see that it's about requests and it goes up and down and it looks fancy and shiny. Good on our dashboard, we can put it on a TV screen, but actually we don't know anything about the data that it's shown here. We don't know, is it many requests? Are they going actually up or down? What is happening here? So using the grid is the most important thing I figured out in the past, which is yeah, for most people um, obvious, but it changes so much if you actually use the most common things that are out there, like grids and the y-axis, because now we can see that request, how much the difference be key, uh, between the most bottom and the most up value actually is. Um, here we can see a CPU graph that tells us, okay, there's a peak somewhere, and for comparing things, this is actually not the best thing that you can do, because in this graph, there are many CPUs merged into one graph and averaged. So just by looking av on averages, um, uh, we cannot tell any details about the behavior, because if we look deeper into it and split the graph like you should do, because you have more than one CPU, in this case it's four, you can see that they, um, that each cheap CPU behaves completely different. And this applies also to other graphs like network or disks. And Grafana has this feature where we can just repeat panels or repeat entire rows. And you should make usage of that when you have something like disk CPUs or network statistics. Graphs should also always be readable, not only for you, but also for every other person in your organization that is using these graphs. To be more readable, um, you can add more features from Grafana, like um, adding annotations, which add even more context to your graph, so you can better understand what the graph is actually showing to you. In this example, we have a, again, a load graph, but with annotations in it that tell us at which point our monitoring actually alerted us because of a failing service. So now you can not only see what is happening um, to the load, but you can also see when did the monitoring alert us, at which point, and at which um, time frame do I have to look at the graphs. Um, this goes also the other way around. You can also add too many annotations and too many contexts, so you always should care about um, how many information you add to one single dashboard or to one single graph. So the wrong way would be this. This was actually one single dashboard. I had to split it into three columns to fit it into the presentation. Um, again, it's pretty nice looking. You can see many colors and many shapes and many things. But for someone that is not into the, exactly into the data, it's pretty useless. Um, and that brings me to my last point. So the most common pitfall I've found out is that people try to visualize data that they, are, that they don't actually know about. So with the tools nowadays, we collect many, many things, um, and we store them somewhere to use them later at some point. Um, but in my opinion, it's absolutely necessary that you know what data you are collecting and understand each and every um, metric that you are collecting somewhere so you can actually use it for debugging. Um, the best dashboards cannot help you to find an issue if you do not understand the underlying data that you are collected before. Um, when we think we know the data, but we don't actually know them, this, le this leads us usually to building wrong graphs and wrong dashboards, and this, again, leads us to um, yeah, misinterpretation. That's it from my side. Thank you very much for the attention.